this lecture is going to look at one type of quasi-experiment, which is the interrupted time series design. And so to go into more depth about what this design looks like, we're going to talk through an example of the Connecticut crackdown. So in 1955, there was uh, a rash of fatalities due to traffic. Um, there were really high rates, the highest that Connecticut had ever experienced. It became a political crisis. So the governor said that they needed to really crack down on speeding. Um, and so the governor pushed through legislation that passed through the state legislature that imposed stiff sanctions on people who were speeding. Uh, the first time that you were caught speeding, you had a um, stiff fine. And then after that, you ran the risk of losing your license entirely. So the question is, what is the effect of this Connecticut crackdown on overall fatalities rates? So they saw, when they looked at the data here, that there were um, reductions in the rates of fatalities. We see that before the crackdown in 1955, fatalities were around 325 annually, and then it fell down to around 285. So we see a reduction. The question is, is this effect actually due to the Connecticut crackdown or due to something else? So this design, is a pretest, post test, right? Here's the observation on the dependent variable, and then there's the imposition of the treatment right around here. And then they look at the post test, um, which is the uh, dependent variable measure once again. Um, and so the question is is this decrease that we see due to traffic, um, in, in traffic fatalities, actually due to the crackdown? Is it due to this or is it due to something else that we might be observing or not observing? So the question with this, um, when we want to assess real causal processes, is whether there are internal validity threats that are actually at play, right? So is this change that we observe between 1955 and 1956 really due to an internal validity threat? So I'm going to go through four potential threats that we might observe. The first is the history threat, and that's that an event other than treatment occurred between the pretest and the post-test and that that event is what accounts for the change. So imagine that maybe rainfall was especially low in 1956, that the roads were actually a lot safer than they had been in prior years, and that's what really accounts for it. So here, that event, that other potential confound, would be rates of rain, right? And so that's introduced, making these roads safer, and it's not really due to the effect of that policy at all. A second internal validity threat to consider is maturation. And maturation is where uh, there's a long-term trend and that that long-term trend, not the treatment, is what is responsible for the change. So thinking this through, maybe driving fatalities overall are following throughout the country. Drivers are becoming more experienced. They're learning to read the road better, to read other um, other drivers, and so just naturally, you're going to see a decline in rates of fatalities because drivers are just becoming better at it. I add this in here simply because a Google image search of driving yielded a surprising number of pictures of dogs driving, and so I thought I'd add a little bit of levity at this point in the semester. So a very experienced canine driver here. Third internal validity threat could be testing. So the dependent variable might be changing as a result of a pretest that there is this interaction of, of testing and the treatment. So maybe news of this high fatality rate in 1955 um, broke. There are a lot of stories that are written about it, and it made drivers much more cautious in 1956. So you're going to see rates fall um, because drivers are going to be engaging with more caution, not because they're worried about losing their licenses, but simply because they know they don't want to die. So this is the effect of the dependent variable itself is going to change, um, change that process. And then fourth is a term called regression to the mean. This comes up um, in time series designs. So regression to the mean is that if a variable is extreme on a pretest, it will tend to be closer than to the average on a post-test. But if you have an outlier the first time around, you're probably not going to have an outlier the second time around. So maybe that high fatality rate in 1955 was just a fluke. Um, and so naturally, you would expect in 1956 that it's going to have a lower fatality rate so that we can't expect there continue to be flukes over and over again. 
Naturally, you're going to go back to something that's closer to the mean fatality rate in 1956. So in order to address these internal validity threats, um, we're going to change the type of study that we do. We're going to change um, the nature of the observations. Before, we just looked at a pretest and a post-test. Well, what if we extended the number of observations? What if we looked at a longer period of time? And this is what's called the interrupted time series design. So the interrupted time series, you look at several observations on the dependent variable, overall trends in fatality rates, and then you have the imposition of a treatment, and then you look afterwards at trends once again. Right? So just remember from our experimental design um, lectures, uh, we have this treatment here, the X, and it's in parentheses because the researcher isn't the one who's responsible for imposing it. So with this inter interrupted time series design, when we extend the time series, we see that there is um, something that looks kind of like a trend, that um, fatality rates have been going up and then they go down after the treatment is imposed. So what we want to ask now is does this kind of design uh, address the internal validity threats that we introduced earlier? Keeping in mind, of course, that since this is not an experimental design, um, we can't entirely eliminate these internal validity threats, but can we make the study better? So first of all, the history threat. Well, we see that extending this, yeah, it does address it somewhat. It's possible that for a couple of years afterwards, um, there were unusual conditions that would mean um, that you have something else that's going on. Maybe you have several years of a dry period. Um, and so to address that f more, we'd want to extend this time series uh, going beyond 1959 to look 10 more years in the future. Um, so with this setup, we have addressed it somewhat, though we could make it a little bit better. Maturation, likewise, we're addressing it somewhat. It's much better than before. We can look to see if there's a general trend. Um, but personally, I would rather see if there's overall a trend throughout the United States, and I'd want to see um, over a longer period of time. So this is much better, but it isn't entirely fixed. Testing, um, we haven't been able to do that entirely with this new um, setup because it could be that people continue to learn that lesson about driving more safely as a result of hearing about it in 1955. Um, so you may have a slight effect as you go further out, but I would say overall, it's still a concern there. And then regression of the mean, yes, but you definitely address this by looking at a longer period of time. Um, you know that this isn't just one fluke and this isn't just one fluke here, but you can look at the, the general trend over time and see that it does look like there is a decline after 1955. So you might want to make these um, study even better by looking at a comparison group. Um, so you looked at that first group there in Connecticut, and they have the treatment, but wouldn't it be better if we were able to look at this and look at some sort of control group? Um, and so this is what the interrupted time series with the comparison group does for us, that you're looking at this 10 years or so prior treatment, 10 years, and then here, 10 years or so, um, there's no treatment here, and then see what that general trend is over time. So how does this interrupted time series design with a comparison group do on the internal validity threats? So here, let's look at, see what the data is. So this is Connecticut, right? And then here are a number of control states. Um, so these researchers added um, the uh, various other states in there, including New York, including New Jersey, including uh, Massachusetts, other New England states, to see if you see general patterns there um, and how those compare to what's going on in Connecticut. And they chose these control states um, because they're likely to have similar weather patterns, all being in the Northeast, and they're also likely to have um, some cultural similarities that might be beneficial. So does this actually address the internal validity threats we laid out before? History, um, somewhat, but you might have some sort of effect, you know, if you had a dry period that um, you're going to be having the same effect in those control states, so you're not able to say that it wasn't there, but it's much better than it was before because you're able to look to see um, what this general trend is. And likewise with maturation, um, you see that it looks here like there's maybe a slight downward trend, but it looks pretty flat. It's, it's close to being flat. Um, and here we see that it's kind of going up and then it's going down. 
Um, so we're able to see that there's not this dramatic downward trend over time. That's something that we see in Connecticut, but not in those control states. Testing. With a specific example, I would say somewhat. Um, and the reason for that is that you might have people who are reading newspapers um, in New York, New Jersey, who learn about um, this effect and they, look, they learn about these high fatality rates. So they might see the similar um, interaction of testing and the outcome that we saw in Connecticut. But it you know, probably will be a little bit better. Those people may not be paying attention to the news quite as much as people in Connecticut would be. And finally, addressing regression of the mean. Yes, by extending the time series, um, you are able to address this. However, while this is doing better on a lot of these other internal validity threats, it does introduce a new threat, which is the diffusion of X. And that could be that maybe New England drivers um, and New York area drivers are simply becoming more cautious due to that Connecticut crackdown. In other words, that treatment of having the crackdown is spilling over beyond Connecticut and moving to other areas. And so if that's the case, then you'll see um, these effects spread throughout all these other control states because people are not simply driving in Connecticut. Somebody might live in New York, drive in Connecticut, then come home and drive a similar way when they're in New York. Um, so you're going to have this diffusion effect. So to try to improve on some of these internal validity threats even more, there's a new kind of time series, interrupted time series design that researchers use, which is called the multiple interrupted time series design, sometimes called MITS design. And here, you want to look at not just the effect of one treatment that's imposed, but what if you had the treatment imposed multiple times? Then you'd be able to see if there continues to be that causal effect over and over again. What this would mean is that first time around you have a slight crackdown, and then you have a stiffening of punishment even more, more and more crackdown. So if you were to see the same trend happen every single time, you would make the punishment worse. Um, that would really reinforce your argument um, and would add additional evidence to help you overcome some of those internal validity threats. And then finally, you can look at this multiple interrupted time series design um, while also adding in a comparison group. So getting at um, combining the best of both worlds of this one and this model, um, where you're able to make these comparisons and see over time, do you see that kind of relationship um, in both groups? And if not, then you're able to make some sort of causal claims, um, even if you're not able to fully get to an experimental outcome.